Nerds, by nerds, and today with me I have Jacob Buds from XP to level three. Also, I'm Nerdica oh. Steve. I don't even think I said my name. <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> it's you. It's Dave. You're here. <laughs> I, I am here. In, in case you found your way here by accident or whatever. <laughs> or came here to see Jacob. Um, but me and Jacob have just been talking for a while, and I almost forgot to go live um, because we're just having yep. a lot of fun. Uh, and, just and, sitting here ranting, and he's like, we should go live. And I was like, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we're going over the, the, the XP to level three process because I was saying, like, is it as effortless as it looks? Because when your videos come out, like here at Nerdarchy, we're like, we're pretty sure he just turns on the camera and starts babbling. <laughs> and then we're like, and he's like, no, that's not it at all. Sort of. <laughs> I'm like almost kind of like glad that that's what people think because that's what I almost want it to be is that I just turned on the camera and I was like, I'm going to talk about vampires and then, like, that's it. Um, because like, I, <laughs> I almost feel the same way about your channel. Like you, you guys are all just like sitting there and it's like, you just kind of like, all right, let's talk about something today. Click and let's talk. And like, that's it. But, um, that's the secret, right? Like, I guess like yeah. everyone, like we used to literally do just that the early videos. Yeah. That's what it was. It's like, we'd have topics. We'd pick one and we just talk. Now it's like the day before we get together and spend like three hours punching <laughs> up three videos that we're going to do. And it's like. Nice. They're not scripts per se. They're just like bullet points or things that we want to kind of include. And we still fuck things up all the time anyway. Nice. <laughs> but so it's okay. The internet will let you know. Yep. <laughs> so in between each take, do you guys change your shirts so that people think that you didn't film all in one day? Or do you not give a shit? No, nah, we do change the shirts. I mean, once nice. upon a time. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Once upon a time, we didn't bother. We were just like 10 videos in a row. Same shirt. <laughs> <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> you don't like it just get off my lawn <laughs> guys uh, let's film 10 videos today yeah it's i great. mean it's been a process right when we started out we used an external microphone and an iphone mm -hmm. um oh and then, you know and Damn. then we upgraded to the the logitech webcam and then, yeah, I know. And then eventually, yeah, <laughs> eventually we did get a D DSLR camera, and now we have like three of them. Dude, so, yeah, your videos look good now. Like they look nice. I mean, there's nothing you can quality. do about this, but the, <laughs> but the video quality is up. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. There's something different about learning D and D from some wizened wizards. It's different. It's like I soon like I'll watch somebody else's video and be like, yeah, okay. Like somebody like taking 20, whoever that guy is. And then I'll watch you and I'm like, this guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> you know, I think like, so the fun thing for us and I think what people like is because we played like all the editions and not just played them, but like lived yeah. through them. So it's kind of fun to like draw the co contrast and be like, oh, well, this is how it was when we used to play. Definitely. And that's something that some of us just don't have the advantage of. It's like, I, I can only go back and like, I played 3.5 for four months and I've only played 5e and like, that's it. So, yeah. but you got cool hair, like where we're like losing our hair. <laughs> so I don't have a cool beard. <laughs> I need one. Everybody has one. Don't worry. One day you'll go through puberty. And... <laughs> I'll get um, big and strong. Yeah, yeah. Youth, well, youth has its youth has its own advantages for sure. Um, so, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. so what are you what are you guys doing over there in California, man? You playing some oh, D and D? Yeah, on? we we are. Um, we're it's we've had to adjust a lot, but um, so we we've got our live streams that we normally do, and we would just have everybody come over and play them. But now that there's a pandemic going on, instead we've uh, resorted to moving to online, and uh, it was really funny because uh, we were about to start like two, or three new games. We had just started a brand new one, and then two new games we were about to start, and then. We stopped for a month or two and then to try to figure it out. And not a lot of my friends are super comfortable with playing online because I'm just live streaming my games with my friends. Mm -hmm. But um, we slowly kind of got used to it as we grew more and more impatient. And now we're starting to kind of get into it. And we've really adjusted to playing online. It's been pretty fun. So over on our Kane Arcade, which is my second channel where we do live stuff, um, we uh, uh, are starting up some new games and things, and uh, it's it's really exciting because I've just been learning how to do online games a lot more, and it's really fun. So um, I still don't like it more than in person. In person, mm -hmm. it's just so much more like personal. I like it, but 
it's better than nothing and i love it and it's a lot of fun so yeah um excited about that oh, that is arcane arcade <laughs> yeah, I'm curious yeah, yeah, now. A... <laughs> i was curious now I'm like let me go see what's going on over there <laughs> yeah yeah um and we it's been pretty crazy the amount of support like it's it's just this little side thing that me and my friends do that we just have fun just playing our games and doing it live and um my my roommate colton he really likes you know all of the live kind of stuff and he he runs the stream and everything and does all the sound and stuff but um and then we weirdly get like a good amount of people that come by and are like hey i just finished watching 28 of your episodes and i'm here and i'm like whoa that's crazy so yeah. uh we've been getting some cool support and it's a lot of fun you guys get you get you're getting decent views over there as well for for live plays yeah it's surprising i we, initially we weren't it was like Yay, we got 50 people today, and the VOD has 80 views. Yes, and now we it's like been consistently about 100 people per yeah. stream, and then they get about 1,000 afterwards, and we're like, what the fuck? That's crazy. <laughs> so it's been, it's been pretty cool. Yeah, so we're going through that now with, the, with this mm -hmm. channel that you people are watching right now is like uh, regrowing it. Uh, I mean, cool. but we've had a couple cool people on here. I mean, we have quite a few cool people on here, yourself included, that's de definitely helping with that. But you know, I guess the thing is, you know, YouTube kind of, kind of splits up the algorithm with like people that like short term, short form content and long form content, and mm -hmm. and YouTube, as much as like content creators like to bitch about the algorithm in YouTube, it does yeah. what it's supposed to do. It do and, it does. Like I know so mm -hmm. many people complain about YouTube all the time, but like I a lot of the time, every time it it, it does something that like screws me off a little bit, I'm like that's fair though like i see why they did it i i kind of understand it sometimes i know some people have had some very bad experiences but like i don't know it's always been pretty equal to me <laughs> yeah it's because they make it personal they think it's yeah. about them but it's not it's about the viewer experience and youtube is trying to cater to that right even yeah. if the viewer themselves don't know it right the algorithm it's just a machine it doesn't yeah it doesn't take sides it just you know, it, all it looks at is like, what does you want as a viewer? And if you find that your favorite creators aren't showing up anymore, guess what? They might not actually be your favorites anymore. <laughs> exactly. That's it. And so you just started watching somebody else is the thing. Yeah. And, and, and you know, it, it sometimes you don't, as a YouTuber, don't necessarily just are bad at making videos now. It's just that, uh, it, it, time goes on, things go stale and you have to try something new at some point. Like it's just, just how it goes. You got to change. You have to evolve. I mean, yep. And, and as someone who's been doing this for like six years now, that's that's definitely something. Like you can see, like the different evolutions that we made throughout those times. Whether yeah. it's like tech upgrades, how we shoot our videos, how we present our videos, uh, just getting better. Like yeah. I realize, I'm like, wow, a lot of the filler sounds, I don't do them quite as often, and the you knows and likes have gone way down. Like there's like these jersey sayings that we just use as filler words <laughs> people used to rip us mercilessly uh and they've gone down some they're still there they're not yeah. they're completely gone and it probably never will be but yeah yeah, yeah yeah makes sense <clears throat> and good editing helps as well a lot. yeah 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 do you uh do you guys have an editor we do have an editor we use a we use a company um called vid chops uh oh, cool. and they're, they 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 edit videos for we get about 12 videos a month for them for what it would cost me to get like one. Oh wow that's cool so they, they must be farming it out somewhere the disadvantage is they know nothing about D&D so it's like you yeah. have to I don't think it saves a lot of time they just do a better job that's good you yeah know, if you're satisfied with it then that's great yeah so you know and it's just the things like you learn as you go along what do you want to spend your time doing Oh, yeah. oh, you know, also as we went to more complex edits, it's like, do you, like, I wasn't even sure I had a computer that could handle doing <laughs> three cameras. My buddy's like, you know, if you try and edit on your computer, it might melt. <laughs> <laughs> it will explode. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so are all your games streamed now? Do you play any um, games that are just to play? Yeah, we play a few um, uh, home ones uh, that we do online now. So, um, and it just depends. Like we, we, it was actually really funny. We had a couple of friends that moved to Washington a little while ago, and then we just started a game because of this, and we're all playing online. So we play that kind of every Saturday. And then I also have a patron game I play with um, 
people on my Patreon, and we've been we've been playing for almost a year. We've been playing for a year and a couple months now, so that's been really fun. We're almost done with Descent into Avernus, which is I love that module so much, but the beginning of it is so bad. Hmm. <laughs> um it's like it's so funny because that i could i could talk forever about it but um it's it's baldur's gate descent into avernus but the cool part about the book is the avernus part yeah it feels like they put baldur's gate in there to be like hey everybody do you remember baldur's gate and everybody's so, like yeah but it's the worst part of the adventure <laughs> yeah so like i got a little bit of an inside track on that and like they wrote it without so much of the Baldur's Gate initially. I think that's what it was supposed to be, is that you would just go it was. To, because you leave Baldur's Gate and it goes, go to Candlekeep and talk to this other important NPC, and then another NPC sends you to the nine hells. And it's like we we just spent a long time in Baldur's Gate to come somewhere else. Then to go to somewhere else. It's like what if it's a yeah, because you know why? Because they started, they released all this stuff that had to do with Butters Gate. So they're like, oh, this had, you know, this has to do with it now too. So I know for a fact they went back and made the writers rewrite a bunch of shit. I bet they did because uh, it's so weird. It just yeah. doesn't fit. And it's like, hey, you guys, welcome to the game where you're gonna go to hell soon. Let's do a dungeon crawl for three games where you're in a bathhouse and you have to fight ball cultists. And it's like, why are we doing this? Yeah. <laughs> Because marketing thought it would be a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I've been following this pretty cool uh, this guide on DMs Guild, and I kind of we just skipped over Baldur's Gate and we got directly to the night to Avernus really quickly. Yeah, it's, who are you? It's using? really cool. That it, that module is really awesome. It's super creative. Who, the the team that wrote that book is uh, so talented. Because I, as I'm like, I, I'll go to a new chapter and read it and be like, this is so cool. Like, it's, this is really awesome. Do you uh, so, the beginning? Do you sucks. know? Do you know the name of? Um, who who wrote it or the name of the module? Because if you know. I ha yeah, if I got the book around here, oh, what? Oh, uh, what is it? it? It was it a print on demand? Yeah, yeah. Um. Oh oh of the DM skilled one. Yeah. Oh oh yeah yeah I have that right here. Yeah, um. Man. It's uh. I'm pretty sure they've made a lot of different um guides for the pre written games. Um, but it is, yeah, it's called Baldur's Gate Descended to Avernus Complete DMs Bundle. Um, and it's, uh, it's by Eventure Games with a Y, Eventure Games. So, um, and it's, it's been great. They have a Dragon Heist one. They have a, um, I think they have one for Salt Marsh too. And it's, it's just like a, they have like alternate ways for you to run the game. Mm -hmm. um in like little pdfs but they also bring like there's in a pdf they go here's an entire dungeon summarized with the flavor text and it's just super super helpful one of the things they did with a a descent into avernus was they um they did this part where it was uh, uh you can run the nine the 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 avernus area as an open world because what you're originally supposed to do is there's like two paths you can do go down one's like the path of devils and the path of demons and the path of demons you do a bunch of demon stuff and you have to go this place this place this place this place and the devil's one is the same thing but more devil like but what they did is they they revamped it and they went all right give your players these quests and the entire of avernus is just an open world and they can go wherever they want and it's like oh and my players loved it they thought it was super fun so yep. nice so people should check those out if they're interested yeah you should it's pretty cool well, yeah, I'm fairly certain your recommendation will go a long way for those folks. <laughs> I suppose so. Yeah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> maybe. <clears throat> I'll just yeah. throw some links down in the pin post, people. Um, cool. For for Jacob, and just I'm sure you know where to find him anyway. Actually, I just got excited <laughs> about ha uh, having you on. And because we haven't talked in a while, especially not yeah. talk, talk other than chat. And I hate chat. We last talked at packs right uh yeah that would be yeah. that would be it so almost i mean well not almost but we're going on a year or so yeah that's right uh yep, yep, yep. It, it's Have you, definitely uh... sorry go ahead i was just gonna it's definitely one of the things that i miss about um uh saver dice is just hanging out with oh with, yeah with, man. yeah you and guy and mike that like th 30 minutes before we started we all just talk about something like <laughs> yeah <laughs> you just know, sit there in silence and cody would be like you know what's dumb and then we're like you know what cody you are dumb <laughs> we just sit there and yell at him oh my god i missed that so much <laughs> 
the, 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 the good old days the good old days for real for sure those those games were fun I, I missed them a lot yeah they were cool have you uh have you been playing games recently yeah all, all my games have been offline now <laughs> really like, yeah I, I i know it's crazy but um we just recently started up with online so we started up this week with those bastards which is uh a game we kind of did as a one shot a couple years ago at a convention cool. uh with the the nerdarchy crew and we've been doing this like team game where we've been running it offline with uh, me ted and doug and our some of our writers mm. and since we're like oh we're doing this live channel maybe maybe we should just do it there uh so so we started doing that and, and then saturday mornings uh there's uh there's there's a bunch of people um twitter people like goblin kate and uh avarice or uh, Aris and um, James and Urcaso, DM, oh, Jazzy nice. Hands. And That's like, cool. we kind of have like this drop in game where we play. That's fun. Yeah. So uh, that's been kind of cool. We uh, Ted runs a game. Uh, cool. Then we just did, we just did a session zero for the expanse that James and Urcaso is going to be running. Ooh, uh, it's me, Ted, my wife, and. Um, Brandon from uh, Ru uh, Runehammer. I don't know if you've seen um, his channel. Uh, also, mm -hmm. he also has the one. Uh, what is it? Uh, art, uh, index card RPG. Oh um, yes, yeah, I have seen this. Yeah, he's yeah. He recently moved to uh, to Philly, so we have a couple That's games cool. that we've been trying to get together. And I'm, I think my game is going to be coming up uh this month we're going to be doing the session zero so we have a bunch of stuff that started that's cool uh, and uh yesterday we did a session zero for um the artists that did our maps for out of the box daryl t jones also did a board game called dobbers uh Ooh. quest for the key and so we're going to be playing a 5e game in his world and he's like hey i want my son to be in this game and i was like okay cool and he's like and my friend jeff so I was like, okay. I was like, well, I have a son too, so I'll have him play. And then I was like, you know what? His son is like 13. So I was like, you know, my nephew who plays with us sometimes is 13. So I asked him to play. Um, and then we also got... Uh, is that like like super... Is, it, is that fun or have you guys started that game yet? We've, we've only done the Session Zero. Oh, just the Session Zero. And okay. then we have Teen DM Fenway as well. So that one's going to be cool. a stream game on Thursday afternoons. It's kind of fun having like that that like crazy age difference between like uh the players yeah like, so really like how that goes yeah so i figured we would lean into it a little bit and uh cool. and see how that goes uh and already like the kids are putting together their backstories together it's awesome uh like so the, the, the your character choices are like like a fantasy goblin um not like your D, &D goblin rats mm. Not, I don't even. Think, it's not even like a rat race. It's just rats. They're just, just rats. They're just bigger, <laughs> smarter rats. Just rats. And, and the daubers are like these forest, uh, forest gnomes, kind of. And they have okay. like three or four different varieties of those. That's kind of fun. Yeah. So That's it's take. Cool. It's taking place like right after there. It's like uh, six months after a war has happened between the rat kingdom and the daubers. Uh, that was sparked by <laughs> that was sparked by an evil an evil dauber. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. So all I know That's is cool. I'm playing a rap barbarian named Rizzo. That is perfect. It's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So yeah, that, so that'll be that should be fun. So yeah, we're kind of getting back into doing more stream games. Cool. Um, That's fun. We have been doing. I, I love live streaming games like that. It's just it's so fun. And I know a lot of like more popular streamers don't really engage with chat, but yeah. we really like engaging with chat just because it's fun. And so like it's it, it's just cool to have kind of like a community there um, with you while you're playing. I don't know. It's kind of fun. So let's see. I feel you. you <laughs> let's see. There was a question. There it is. Question. Uh, for you. What gave you the idea to do your videos on the floor? I like the look <laughs> it gives to the videos. So it, <laughs> is it because the one like you? I remember like you did one and we and we had an ad spot in it and you were like sick, so you were in bed shooting your video. 
<laughs> okay, I did that one because I had previously done a floor one. Okay. But um, it all, but no, yeah, no. I, I woke up one day and I was like, I have to do a video for Dave today. What if I just did it in bed? And that was just kind of it. But um, it, it all started from uh, the flanking video that Cody ripped on me for. Uh -huh. um, and uh, let me, there, there is one reason why I did it. And it is, I think, the top comment still. Um, where is it? Uh, so I, I can't find it right now, but somebody put in a comment. Yeah, there it is. And it's like my favorite comment. And it says, I love that he's just laying on the floor ranting. That's all I wanted <laughs> is I just wanted to be like laying on the floor like, guys, you know what's really stupid is flanking. And it's dumb. And everyone's like, is he on the floor? Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Like, that's all I wanted was people to be a little bit confused as to me filming on the floor. And then everybody made it such a big meme that I was like, all right, I'll keep doing it. Um, but I'll do it in bed sometimes. And the bed ones are fun because I get to be in bed while I film. Mm -hmm. But it's also not fun because I have to set up a light, a camera, a sound system on my bed. So, <laughs> um, but uh, uh, I guess I just got the idea because I wanted to do it. And I felt like, I don't know, I, it, it really was, I didn't think very much of it. I was just like, yeah, let's just film on the floor. But um, I then I started reserving it for videos that were like, I'm going to talk about dumb stuff whenever I'm on the floor. Um, and, and now I'm getting tired of making those because it, my complaints aren't that valid. <laughs> and people keep proving me wrong. I'll be like, <laughs> dispel magic is dumb. And everybody's like, well, first of all, you got the spell wrong. And second of all, here's eight ways why it's not dumb. And I'm like, ah, you're right. <laughs> and I get mad. <laughs> curse you, internet. <laughs> yeah, it's curse you and you being right. <laughs> but yeah, so it was just it's dumb idea i came up with and i was like whatever let's do this <laughs> and that question was from bk dan if you have questions just tag nerdarchy live in it or just put a question in front of it we can pick them out easy yeah, totally we'll, you we'll ever, grab you, have questions. you ever tried filming on the floor dave you know we've done a bunch of stuff and no we haven't although that'd be interesting with me and ted laying on the floor yes, you should do it. <laughs> we can't do it now you did it they'll just be like you're trying to be like jacob oh, like, i'll endorse it Everett, you're endorsed i allow you you can take yeah. it the amount, <laughs> the amount of hate we would get over that oh my Cause, god because the internet is such a weird place yeah i know <laughs> well yeah, yeah that's that, dude dabby was telling me about that he he messaged me and he was like i can't say something's dumb because people will say that i'm copying you and i'm like just by calling something dumb <laughs> I'm, not the, I'm not the only person that can call stuff in dd dumb guys everyone i'm not the only one that can do that <laughs> Yeah, so like he made like a video called like Counterspell is a yeah. bad spell. And it's yeah. like he was complaining. So he's like, oh, I'm copying Jacob. And I'm like, no, you're not. I'm going to stop complaining so everybody else can do it more. <laughs> Alfay <laughs> says if we do that, I might not get back up. And that is <laughs> accurate. Accurate. So guys, welcome back to Nerdarchy. All of our videos are on the floor now as I am Live here. here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> uh, Soul Cloud has a question, but I'm not sure what they're asking. How do you start in that scenario? I don't know. If, I'm not sure if you're talking about when we were talking about Descent into Avernus, Baldur's Gate, or whatever. If you clarify, we'll come. We'll circle back. They're just talking about this live chat. How did I get into this scenario? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, we, hound, we hounded you. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, it, with, uh, with, with, I, I don't know. I, I need i need to, you need to be more specific yeah give us some context we'll, we'll circle back like i said mm. uh so what which do you have a favorite game out of the ones you are streaming right now are you oh man that's tough so i really like we've been playing this one that uh, that my my friend's running it's called adventures of avenia and i like that one a lot because i get to play and i don't get to play a lot i am mostly dming so um and i get to play an artificer and artificers are super fun um, and, he, and I, I just, I enjoy that game cause I can kind of just sit back and just play instead of having to manage all this stuff. But I am really excited for this brand new game that we're going to start. That is the continuation of my other game that we ran for like a bajillion episodes. Um, the first game was called Sunder and this new game is called Evenfall. And, um, it's kind of in the same world. It's a couple of years afterwards, after, uh, the, after the heroes did all, all that kind of stuff. Um, save the world and all that and um, it's a new 
group of people and it's the world has changed because of what the previous characters have done. I like my games being a lot like, I don't know if you've ever played Borderlands, um, but it's this game, uh, it's like this video game where uh, like the first game, there were four guys and we, you beat the game as those four guys. And then on the second game, those four guys are NPCs in that game and you play new four guys. And then the third game, they do the same thing. And so this game is like the continuation of another continuation of this game. So like there will be NPCs in the game that were old player characters that have done stuff in the world. And so it's just super exciting to get my players excited because it's this world that they've got to learn and play in and change and whatnot. And it's like, all right, this is the continuation of it. So it's how do you handle that? Do you NPC them or do you sometimes go, yeah. oh, their characters aren't in this scene, so do you want to run your old character? Yeah, sometimes, actually. Sometimes, depending on the situation, I do go, okay, I, I want you to play this part out with this old character. But a lot of times I prefer to do it because I want to give them a sense of they aren't this person anymore and this person has evolved and they don't know how. So I normally go, it's been eight years since the last game. Your character has been doing this and then something happened and now they're doing their own thing. And then when they come across this character, I do my best to play them accurately. But <laughs> uh, but I, I, I like the idea, the experience of playing in a game where you get to see your old character again and be like, oh, that's the guy, uh -huh, I know him. I played him at one point. Um, but sometimes my players get like uncomfortable with it. And by my players, I mean my fiance will be like, ah, you didn't play him right. And I'm like, hey, I am doing my best. <laughs> So uh, yeah, but it's uh, it, it's it's fun. Um, I think everybody's getting more into it and more used to it. So it's uh, it's pretty fun. But unless like the character joins them in like combat or something, yeah. um, I'm normally playing them. Nice. Okay, so we, we we've got a clarification. It was they're All actually right. commenting on something they put a, put up in the chat level higher. Perfect. Thanks, Elfbait, for picking that out for me. Uh, so it was uh, so okay, uh, I've actually never done legitimate D&D, but I have no idea how to start as a minor. Oh. I own the Dungeon Master's Guide and the Player's Handbook. Uh, Jacob is practically a minor now st st still, so... <laughs> guys so might be able to now, connect. I'm slowly becoming a minor again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I... You're I'm, working your way out of being a minor. <laughs> I, uh, um, I look like I'm in fifth grade at all times. You're going to love uh, that when you're my age, because I look like I'm 20 years older than I am, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my... Uh, yeah, I, everybody tells me that. They're like, oh, it'll be a blessing when you're older. I'll be like, yeah, cool. I'll wait for that then. <laughs> I yeah no I started um, when I was in high school, um, so basically like six months ago. Uh, just kidding, but um, <clears throat> it's it's the thing that is is the one thing I hear from a lot of people that are trying to get started or people who are have heard about the game but don't play it is that they just don't have friends who who are into it. Because um, I I know a lot of people who would probably play it if they had more people around them that did. And it's like, yeah, it makes sense. And I, I have so many, and like, there's a lot of people who come to me and be like, can I play in one of your games? And it's like, no, I have like 30 other people that play in my games. And so there's just always somebody looking for a group. And I think like the, the hardest part of D and D and wanting to play it is trying to find like a group that, that will work and, and play with you. But there are so many online communities now that you can use to try to find groups. There's discords upon discords of people like my disc if you go to any of my videos and go to the description and there's a link to my discord there is a chat in there called uh looking for games and you can go in there and be like i'm a player looking for a game or i'm a dm looking for a game and i guarantee you somebody will show up and be like oh so am i and you can get people together and play so that's always like the the toughest part is is trying to find um people who are who are also willing to play yeah, it, I, and it's, I mean, now it's easier than ever. Like, Oh, when, yeah, definitely. When definitely. I was a kid, when I started, it was like, <laughs> there was like one older kid in your neighborhood who played, and like that person would like anoint the new group, right? And that's how, that's how <laughs> it would start. Yeah, that's how it would start. Everything. <laughs> but now, like, I, I feel like, just hit up the theater kids, right? They, yep. They'll be down. <laughs> I was I was a theater kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, I, no, it's really it. Yeah. I I, I kind of have a little bit of a complex now playing D and D because it's like, it's so different, right? Like I feel like yeah. I play a different game than, than, a lot of the games that I see streamed because it's like it yeah. is. It's all the theater kids and the aspiring actors and, 
and yep. we yep. just like I don't know, it just feels different. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it's it's that like character study being able to play characters is just so appealing to people who are in theater because that's what they do. But I have to memorize lines, but now I don't. I can do whatever I want and yeah. also cast spells, which is pretty fun. <clears throat> but yeah, if you look, like you said, there's so many things. Unfortunately, right now with the Rona going on, like some yeah. of the things we would say would be like, hey, go to your local gaming store and see if they have a night there. That's usually a good place yep. to start finding people to play with. But you yep. know what? On, there are so many things going on online. And people are usually willing to, you know, help teach new players and, you know, yep. bring them into the game. And man, it like does not matter what you use either because I've seen people who like go crazy with fantasy grounds and then i've also people who you literally use discord audio only audio and then they share their screen with photoshop and photoshop has the map and it's <laughs> yeah. like oh <laughs> and then they have like a discord bot that they use to roll their dice or they just roll it in person and we just all trust that you definitely rolled that 24. <laughs> yeah and and honestly that is even a step up from Literally, people who just use the voice. Oh my gosh! Guys. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you just <laughs> only voice. You know, let's all get on our phones and call each other, <laughs> and just do it through that. So yeah, so there's definitely ways to make it happen, and it can be yeah. as simple or as complex as you as you want to. Um, so we were playing a game. We've been playing this game kind of uh, sporadically with Esper the Bard. Oh, cool! And yeah, he uses. Uh, stream arm and some kind of Photoshop map maker program and manually does a virtual tabletop essentially. That's kind of cool. <laughs> Where like he's moving the tokens around and you know doing, cool. doing his own fog of war. So <laughs> Is the, a layer with the erase tool. <laughs> yeah, Photoshop. It's so, hilarious. So yeah, so there's just so there's so many different ways to do it. We had a half a TPK. Like the whole party oh, almost TPK. Like I had this cool moment where my uh my dwarf paladin uh rolled the, the natural twenty on the death mm -hmm. save and jumped back up, lasted oh. a couple more rounds and then was murdered. No <laughs> We had one that of the sucks. we had one of the players get paralyzed like in the first encounter. And we're mm -hmm. like, what do we do? Do we go back to town, or you know, after the like fortress is already alerted, or do we keep going? And we're like, we'll keep going. And he was paralyzed for like an hour, and that is a very long time in D and D. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we eventually we left him in a cubby, and like <laughs> the the villains found him and just stabbed him to death. <laughs> <laughs> Why just leave him here? <laughs> that's that's hilarious. It, it was one of the it is one of the more brutal games of D and D I've been in. And apparently the chat is like, oh, Esper's going easy on them. <laughs> yeah. Just so when That's... people say 5e can't, you know, can't, is too easy and can't be lethal. Nerdarchy it totally is, can! Nerdarchy's here totally to prove can. you wrong <laughs> with our oh ineptitude. God. We yeah, do so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way. I feel like I'm just so dumb at the game that mm -hmm. I just do things. I'm like, oh, yeah, I probably shouldn't. I'm... That's why I, I died. I've never really been in a TPK before. Like, I've never played in a game where just everybody died. Like, except for, like, stupid games that we did, like, a one-shot where everybody's character was randomly rolled and we all died at the end. Like, that that was different. But I've never, like, played, like, a like a long-running, more than two games yeah. uh, game where, like, all of us have died. Like, oh, no, no, no. Yes, I have. That's a total lie. We, that's totally happened before. It was uh, the end of Logan's game on Arcane Arcade, the end of Tesseract. We all died. He party wiped us. And then he set us 20 years in the future. And, like, we made a new party who revived the old party. But I ended up just liking the new party more. And I was like, I don't know what to do with these old guys anymore. So yeah. Retire them. Retire them. I they, know. They got wiped anyway. We were so pissed, though. We were so like, oh, we got to we gotta bring them back to life. And yeah. Logan's like, I don't know, maybe. I don't know. I like I like characters. I like winners. I like characters that don't die. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to retire these. Yeah. These guys suck. They've died before. <laughs> So Brian Smith has a question. I'm hitting my group with their first challenge mini boss encounter now that they're at least level three. What are some bastard moves I can pull on them? Oh, they're level three. Anything with exhaustion sucks. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. That's, that's a rule I'm going to be playing with my new game. I'm going to try it out where 
we're not doing massive damage anymore where massive damage is like if you take more than half your hit points you have to make a con save and bad stuff happens instead every time they uh fall to zero and then get revived back to one uh you have a level of exhaustion yeah so, that's the rule esper uses it's a good one really? yeah because you know what like it does keep people from going man i don't want to get dropped because exhaustion sucks Right, because in the default, it's like, okay. It's like, oh, I'm fine. I'm above zero. It's okay now. But I wanted to kind of like desensitize, desensitize, de not make you want to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I did create a new a new spell alongside it. So uh, I am creating new potions, and they're called they're going to be called stamina potions, and stamina potions will remove a level of exhaustion it, um, um, that costs 100 gold. So it'll be like health potions. There'll be a way to get rid of it. But also I made a new spell for like sorcerers and warlocks and stuff they called invigorate where you can get rid of a level of exhaustion at the cost of four hours later you get two more so there will be ways to combat it instead of it just being this archaic thing that it's like ah there's exhaustion you can't do anything about it except sleep yeah you know? like right now the only thing that gets rid of it like exhaustion is harder to remove than a curse in this game it, yeah it is because <laughs> it's it's just not used very much as the thing i really like the exhaustion system but by the time the players are above level five it's like oh we can create food and we don't suffer uh from traveling long distances and cold doesn't bother us and it's like okay so exhaustion is no longer in the game anymore <laughs> yeah but we if can, you do get it it's still like hard that. to get rid of because it's like a it is. It's like greater restoration is the only way to get rid of it, right? Or a long it, rest or a short rest, depending on how nice of a dungeon master you are. Yeah, long rest gets rid of one level of exhaustion. Yeah. So it's so brutal. Like, yo, know, we were, we did a video on the mummy. Don't be a dummy. Use the mummy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's why we don't get a lot of views like you. We just make up stupid titles and don't care. <laughs> I love those titles. Those are great. Those are my favorite thing. But yeah, um, that. That rotting fist is a is a power it, move. It is until until they're like fifth level, yeah. And then it's like, oh, they need a long rest and they get rid of this. Yep. Ha ha, paladin! I've hit you with my disease curse, and the paladin's like, I'm immune to that and everything. Land yeah, hands, one hit point. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so there's definitely things like that that, that that are weird. So yeah, introducing anything with exhaustion. Definitely. Also, I think there's a potion that literally does what you, you're talking about. Does it remove a level of exhaustion? I don't know. It's probably yeah. called a potion of vitality. I it, think that's what it might do. Yeah, I think it is the potion of vitality. Probably something like that. I bet the I, chat knows. They always know. Uh, yeah, they're like, oh, actually, there's a... <laughs> um, yeah, I I find if you really want to be mean, um, stun stuns, anything with stuns, stunning is just so powerful in 5th edition D&D. &D. Um, it's, it's, it's insane. So if you can stun or paralyze any of your players, I mean, they're not going to like it. They hate it. But if you do it, it'll it'll really uh, up the challenge and the ante. I always love passive things happening in combat that uh, make the challenge a little bit harder. So instead of just going, oh, you can't take your turn. Instead, you force them to do something else with their turn. So there it, you're in a room fighting a fire elemental and the floor is slowly filling up with lava but there is a lever 100 feet away on the other side of the room that can stop the lava so one of them is going to have to run over to that lever and stop the lava instead of fighting the the elemental and so like adding little challenges like that into the game where they can uh they have to like like you know interact with other things while they're getting attacked is something that can make it really challenging as well or even like adding like a burning rule, like ah, oh, they take a d8 damage every time it's their turn, so they're just slowly burning. They have to kill this thing really quickly. Like adding in new challenges like that will, will, will press your players and make them think outside the box. Yeah, or you know, um, NPCs, yeah, that you can throw in, you know, throw in there that are going to be threatened, so they have to decide like, do they <laughs> fight the big bad or they protect the NPCs? Yeah. Uh, today's video, we we brought back an old spell from third edition it was like one of my Ooh. favorites because it's like just so vile death knell and i don't know i know I, I know what you speak of yeah death yeah yes. yeah so i mean it's a great spell for you know, to like give to your your villain right and have yeah. them just like the villagers or whatever they're just like snapping their neck and death knelling them <laughs> and, you know and they're getting more powerful as they murder people uh, and and so it, cool. it's also the, like it used to be like the total power move is the DM, 
is like someone goes down and then you download them the, out of the game mm-hmm. for good and it just lets you let, lets them know how evil that NPC was. Yep, just bop goodbye. It's great. It's very cool. I, 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 there's, there's always really cool spells like that. You can just be like, uh, and then we do this, and it's like, nope, sorry, Death Ward, he's not dead. And it's like, oh crap. So there's, yeah, you can, you can always get creative with, with. Uh, I always think you should just think, think about like what your party is made up of, and, and play to that because it's really easy. I should know that to complain about anything in D and D, but to, if you, if you're playing a game and you have a, if you have a barbarian and you have a cleric and you have a druid and a bard like and you let's say you don't have a fighter well now you don't have to deal with anything that the fighter does it's just these four so you want to i always try to build my encounters in my games to what they're already playing because like if nobody in the party has identify i normally just give them the spell and be or the or the magic item and be like this is what it does but if there's like a wizard who's like, I took identify and I know how to cast this. It's like, okay, now the, this is in play. You guys can't identify stuff without this. And so I always just try to cater to the players because it ends up just being more fun. No, I mean, um, that that makes sense. And sometimes like with magic items, it, so in earlier editions of the game, the way you used to play was like, it was a thing to never let the players know what they had unless they figured it out, right? Yeah. But at a certain point, we got smarter and go, this is a huge pain in the ass for the DM. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, the, like there was just always so much more things to track, and then you're like, oh, yeah. every time the fighter swings the sword, I have to remember to add one to the hit. And the Oh, my sword. God, it's so frustrating. Yeah, when it's something like a plus one sword, I'm like, it's a plus one sword. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, like, a cursed item. It's like you would need Identify or something like that to figure it out, but... So Esther wants to know about being a new DM. I'm struggling with DMing and I'm wondering how to tell if it's hard because I'm new and I need to learn or am I just better off as a player? We need more DMs. We always need more DMs. Yeah. So DMing, you you know you're doing it right if your players continuously want to keep playing every week and they think it's fun. Like that's, that's, that's the basic measurement. <laughs> yeah. And, and for what Esther's talking about, I think the biggest thing is you just need more experience. So you're going to get mm-hmm. that by playing yep. and running and you're going to get it faster by running games. You're going to run a bad game. There's yeah. going to be bad games and you're going to learn from them and then learn how to make good games. And that's uh, the struggle of every dungeon master. Yeah. But get, yeah, get in there, get your hands dirty and uh, yeah. you're going to eyeball it. And don't be afraid to change things on the fly if you need to. If it's going really bad for the party, have the bad guy run away for some reason, Mm -hmm. lessen their hit points, come up with a creative solution right then and there so you don't wipe, especially if it's because you made a mistake, right? And it happens. We've all been there. We've all done that. Uh, (laughs) You know, you can even fudge some rolls. I'm not particularly big on fudging rolls, but you can even do that if you want to. There are definitely things that you can do in the middle and make adjustments there's very oh. little you can do though when uh, when your player jumps into lava. No, um, there's not much a... about that. <laughs> I still think about that sometimes when I play games. I'm like, at least at least it's not Dave when he jumped into lava. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, you know, man. sometimes you just need that soothing lava bath. <laughs> In case none of you don't know, back in an old game of Safer Dice um, that I was running on, I think it's only on the Patreon too. It, um, it was, uh, it was, uh, there was a game where David just playing this character for a little while, and then there was just this encounter where he had to like grab onto like this thing, and that's all he had to do, and he would escape. And he jumped and rolled, just rolled in that one. Well, in that one, and I was like, "Ah!" Oh, and there was no way to save him. I was like, "You don't have anything. You have I was- nothing." I was so here's there's, there's a couple things about that that made it even funnier. <laughs> one, I was playing a berserker, the worst barbarian subclass there is, um, but I don't care. I play it anyway, and I had berserk, so that means I had a level of exhaustion. Oh, so, yeah. so I had the rage to not have disadvantage, and and I still rolled in that one. Still rolled a one, and I was just like, "There's like the, the oh, I had placed you in a room with somebody who could already fly. One of the other players. We I had a bunch of was. flying bats. Yeah, yeah, yes, but like they left, and no, no. so you were there alone. No, no, and- no, they didn't left. I just went active first. 
That's I, right. It was only ten foot. It was like a ten foot jump. I'm like, oh, that's easy. Yeah. I'll do it. I mean, and no, honestly, in the lava. that's not how the rules work anyway, Jacob. You don't have to actually make an athletics check to jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I know. But I'm like, you're the to DM. Jump really you... far, you do. Yeah, but it was like ten feet, and I was like seven foot tall. I'll have so, to Joe check my notes. Uh, but I was like, <laughs> but but it's all cool, man. You're the DM. I I uh, you know I go with whatever the DM says. Yeah, but... Um. Even yeah, if that, my character ends funny. up in lo- dying in lava. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh, uh, I was going back to that that other question because um, uh, I I think about this all the time. Do you think you are a better DM than a player, or a better player than a DM? Um, I think I'm a better DM than player because I'm kind of an obnoxious person. So Same. so that can. That can hinder the fun for other people at the table yeah. when I'm not focused on the table. Yeah, I, I'm the same <laughs> way. Yeah, I, I tend to be like, I, I, I'm a very like annoying player. I always want to do stuff. So I'm like constantly like, yeah. you know, you played with me. I want to bust open doors and kill things. Like, I just want to go. So and everybody's like, can we hold on, Jacob? Like, we're all going to die if we keep doing this. I'm like, I don't care. But as a DM, I, I like I assume the responsibility, and I'm like, okay, I have to make this game all blah, blah and like try to make it fun and stuff. So it's it's a big meme between me and my friends. They're all like, Jacob, you're a great DM. You are a terrible player. I'm like, yeah, no. You're an agitator. <laughs> you're an agitator. Yeah, you want things I guess to happen. So. Yeah, I, I agree because I'm like, I get bored, right? And I'm like, yeah. Listen, I'm gonna be like here sitting on my phone ignoring y'all unless we do something. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. Yeah, so we all. need to start kicking down some doors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the bane of my existence is doors. I want them all to be open and I want to see what's inside them. <laughs> You're a cat. you you are a cat. Yes, because that's what my I'm cat right. does. <laughs> I just want to open all of them and be like, what's in here? I wanna know. You go to the bathroom, the cat will paw at the door until you crack it, then he'll open it, look in. And then go walk away. Be like, All right, Dude, I should play a tabaxi ranger that does that. Just is obsessed with opening doors and like seeing what's inside them. <laughs> have you, well, have you looked at Theros at all? The Leonins? The Leonins? Yeah. What is this? In Theros? Oh, Theros. In- uh, I haven't, I, I looked at the pictures in Theros. Yeah. I haven't read it yet. <laughs> I yeah, saw a few monsters and stuff, but. Yeah, so we started looking at it. It's got some cool things, like, and it's funny too. Like, I've already talked. But like about a lion it. person, is that what it is? Yeah, it's a lion person. That's kind of cool. They are kind of cool. I think they're getting some hate on online because they're weaker than the tabaxis, but tabaxis are pretty strong. Tabaxis are pretty strong. They have a cool roar, though. Yeah, they definitely they do. I I, I like the idea of like having you know humanoid animal people that have their own society. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, Indians. and the Leon, the Leonins, they're all like, uh, I don't want to say atheists, but they just don't like the gods. Mm. <laughs> like, like the gods wronged them somewhere <laughs> in their history, and they're like, yeah, like flipping them all guys. the bird now. <laughs> yeah, Theros seems really interesting. I was really surprised when they announced it, and I've been really excited for it because it's like something new. It's like something interesting, and yeah, like it's really. Uh, I'm, I've been excited for it. And also, like all the characters start off with these supernatural gifts. So it's like That's a cool. special power or or a feat, essentially. That's cool. That's fun. I used to do that. We used to do level one racial feats, and then I realized it was way too powerful. But um, that's kind of cool if because it, it's supposed to be like like your – it's mythic odyssey. So you're telling, like, cool stories and stuff, so your characters are always kind of awesome. Yeah. The new, uh, Paladin subclass, I love that it's just Oath of Her- – the what is it? Oath of Glory. Oath of it Glory, It just reminds yeah. me of Reinhardt from Overwatch, where he's just like <laughs> – all the other Paladins are like, I stick to my oath, I follow my god, and this guy's like, I'm awesome! <laughs> I'm really cool! And it's like, that's so cool. I love that. Well, yeah, it's the only kind of Paladin I will play. <laughs> sometimes you got to do what you got to do. For real. Definitely. Also, like, uh, Theros, too, is like, you've got these six races – like all the other mm. DM races aren't in there. It's human, centaur, Leonin, Minotaur, Triton, and did I get them all? And Seder, right? So it's like all right, cool. Yeah, so it's very it's it's very limited, but they're all like really weird races in comparison. I kind of like that. I like yeah. there being kind of like a limited race option for like a campaign setting. I I wish I would do it more. I wish I would just be like, okay, guys, we're just sticking to these races right here because it's just so. I have to. I, I, I'm, like, not trying to be weird about it or, like, trying to be, like, super racist with my game or anything. But, like, it's just, like, so difficult when it's, like, human, half-elf, dwarf, 
Dragonborn, and Lizard Folk. And it's like, ah, I don't know what to do with this guy. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I think that's kind of interesting that they, they limited it to like that set of races, which is kind of cool. It's, I think that's really interesting. Yeah, I mean, you're just gonna, it's like anything. You're just going to tell different stories. Yeah. And, and it is kind of cool. That's like the Dobbers game we're playing. We've got like, I think there's like six choices, that's cool. five choices. Yeah, I like that you have those like those those kind of like, you know, unique choices. I think that's really interesting. And, uh, and, the, and the other thing is like humans are a myth, like. <laughs> they, they, they're not they're not considered real because and everyone is like 20 inches or shorter that's kind of cool that oh that's fun that's that's so interesting i think our size is small but i think it should actually be tiny tiny <laughs> they're all this big yeah like well, like my, my son was going aggro on the designer and he's like says 18 inches but i'm gonna be 20 inches <laughs> <laughs> i want to be this and like every all the choices all the races just get minuses pretty much to their strength <laughs> and con because they're little because they're small that's yeah. awesome that's great <laughs> my, son, my son is like why why does daryl hate fighters <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, you have very little hit points <clears throat> that's right hit points are overrated anyway yeah I think I, I think I have two dump stats. My intelligence and my wisdom is like a seven and a nine. Oh wow! But I'm a rat. I don't need those. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> charisma can be a three. It don't matter. Who it cares? Matter. No, no, I got a twelve <laughs> charisma, so I can intimidate. <laughs> oh, that's that's a useful skill. Very and because in the Dobbers universe, the rats are like the bro dudes. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're the Chads of the universe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're much bigger than everyone else. <laughs> they're walking around with whey protein shakes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I walk, my rat is going, so I'm totally playing them that way. That's awesome. <laughs> That's great. That's so cool. I went and um, shameless plug for D&D &D Beyond. I went into D&D &D Beyond and created, created all the races. Oh, which, nice. Which, like, I threw up, like, four of them in, like, an hour or so it didn't take long at all no yeah their their homebrew creator is actually really nice when yeah. i first used it i was like this is too complicated and well, but it has such a good user interface i feel like it's really nice dude we were we were gonna play it on roll 20 we're playing on roll 20 mm -hmm. and we're yeah. gonna make the characters and then my son was in there with daryl's son and daryl's son was explaining to him how to use roll 20 and they spent like 35 minutes with that. And then I messaged him. I'm like, hey, I got it all on D&D Beyond. You just join this campaign. You can do it. And he built his character in like two minutes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I find, man, I'm so frustrated because I find both Fantasy Grounds and Roll. I know Fantasy Grounds more. But um, Roll20 and Fantasy Grounds just be so weird and strange about so, how they work. You know, know what's cool about um, Roll20 and it's really just a hack how to use Roll20 yeah. without using it is Beyond20. Yeah. So it's an extension where if you open up Roll20 and D&D &D Beyond, you can roll everything from your character sheet in D&D &D Beyond into Roll20. What? I didn't know this. I, I just recently learned it. That Saturday game we play in, uh, you know, someone brought that up and, we're, and they're like, oh, if you don't want to use the Roll20 interface, just you, we can use the maps and everything here and you can use your token here. But you can use your D D beyond character sheet can and you link it to your tokens too um does it link to your tokens that'd be cool i i wouldn't expect it to no no did, no because roll 20 doesn't do that anyway the way fantasy i thought does. yeah yeah, yeah that, that makes or maybe sense. it does i don't know i don't know i don't know how I bet there's works. a way <laughs> get, off, get off my lawn where's my pants <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the only thing i i struggle with with both um uh those systems it's just like their interface is just so weird and strange but like they're great programs yeah but i just love the user interface of D, &D beyond and it's just like i want both <laughs> it's so yeah it's so i imagine they're great though i gotta try that i know they're gonna i imagine they're gonna do a character uh a virtual tabletop eventually so i bought the mythic theros dice uh, I did too. I don't know why I did, but I did. They're, and they're I was fun like, to roll. Yeah, they, are. <laughs> they go, they go dun, 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 when they roll, they like, make noise, and then, and then they're they like, get sucked into a black hole. Yeah. yeah, I know. And then when you roll a nat 20, the dice, the dice gets petrified. Yeah, um, it's pretty cool. I, it's for charity, so I was like, whatever. You know? yeah, 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 me too. And, yeah. And, you know, with them being our sponsors, we get everything for free anyway. So I was like, whatever, we can buy dice. Oh, you're lucky. <laughs> lucky having DDB on as your sponsor. It's pretty cool. Uh, <clears> well, <throat> 
you, well, awesome. I'll tell you how that happened, right? Well, yeah. everyone was complaining about buying the books twice. We're like, oh, this is kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> you want to well, sponsor everybody us? was complaining about buying the books twice. You're yeah. so right. That's what everybody was doing. And because we were going to buy it. Like, we were going to buy yeah. the original Legendary Bundle, but Nuriki was much poorer back then. Um, <laughs> and we were, like, debating. And like, they were running, like, that was the initial deal. And we were debating on whether to do that or not. And so we just decided to reach out with them. And we met with uh, Adam Bradford at the very first PAX Unplugged and, and hung out. And our first live chat was about D&D Beyond. We are like, hey, there's this thing. And it's kind of mm. cool. Because it reminded us of D&D Insider from 4th Edition, which was mm. actually my favorite, like one of my favorite parts of it. Like they had everything you could do in there. The Encounter cool. Builder was so cool. And I was like, oh, yeah. this is kind of like that thing I really liked. Uh, at which I used to pay for that, and we were going to pay for D&D Beyond, and then we started yeah. talking, they're like, hey, we can make you an insider. And it was cool, because when we did that live chat, Adam Bradford was in the comments, he was in the chat, talking to people, and, like, explaining things, and answering questions. That's cool. Yeah, That's cool. Yeah, yeah, he was, like, yeah, I mean, he still kind of is, but he's super into the community. That's awesome. That's great. He's also fun to play with. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I remember when D&D Beyond was, like, first like coming out and i was just like it's cool but i wish it had more stuff and that's just always how i feel about dd beyond like there's yeah. all this stuff on dd beyond and they're like we're about to make an app and i'm like finish it <laughs> get it done and like there, there's just so much I, I like i use it almost every day now it's just so helpful to have an online resource like that so it's just incredible but yeah I don't make characters any other way now. I just go through DDB. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> so much pe easier. People show me a book and I throw it at them. <laughs> so. I'm like, ah, oh, paper. <laughs> I'm gonna just use DDB. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kristen Mal wants to know what what is yours and Jacob's dumbest character idea you had? Oh, probably. Who did I play in uh, the the game Mike ran for the Patreon? The Jade Colossus. You know that guy. The what was his name? Mikhail. That was probably the dumbest one I ever. Was he made. a wizard? No, he was a bard. Oh uh, well. Nobody I... caught on, and I think it's because nobody in that game watched the show. My goal with him was to make Michael Scott from The Office a D and D character, uh -huh. and that's all he was. And the... <laughs> and that was his <laughs> entire thing. And like nobody ever. I made so many references, and nobody yeah. caught on. And I was like, ah, whatever. So <laughs> was, that was probably the dumbest one I ever. I was ever like, yeah, I don't care. This is just supposed to be for comedy, so I'll just make something stupid, something crazy. Yeah, you know? I don't. Man, that's a hard one. I don't know what the dumbest character I've made. I'm sure th there's probably a plethora, but after you know after 30 years of playing this game f picking out one yeah. that's the dumbest is really 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 hard well your characters are always super cool so it's probably really difficult yeah. well i have fun like you know what it is too like because the first half of my gaming was all like dming so it's like yeah. now when i get to create a character and and really like world. also like sometimes playing the, like the dumbest character might be the fun character that you play yeah. Yeah. So I always get scared because some of my friends will do that. They'll make like a we call it meme characters. Yeah. And like everybody's making like like cool, like interesting and like fun uh like characters that they enjoy. And then one person's like, So this guy, he's a warforged, but he is a barbarian and his rage is uh is this thing and it's like what are you doing this is ridiculous like don't <laughs> i can tell you're making like a mean character like this is gonna be fun for one game and then after that everybody else is gonna have a lot of like interest in the plot and you're gonna yeah. be like but my jokes and it's like yeah it's, it's nobody nice. cares nobody yeah. cares about your jokes. <laughs> like for us like early on it was like human genera but uh, you know, so it's like, like, like when we were making memes before there were memes, before that was, yep. before there was an internet, <laughs> or the inter, the earliest days, yeah, of the interwebs. You ever play a character and their name is just Dave? I've not played a Dave yet. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who like will only their characters are always their name. That's weird. It's it is weird, but. <laughs> He has kind of, it's kind of just how he plays. Like, he's yeah. just kind of like, uh, we, we like force him to play. We're like, play D&D. &D. And he's like, okay. And uh, we're like, who's your character? His name's Caesar. And it's like, okay, Caesar. <laughs> and well, then we just call least, him by his name. <laughs> well, at least his name's not Bob. <laughs> yeah, no, like, his name's not like Bob. It's, it's Caesar. It's kind of cool. But so it's, it works. 
Yeah. <laughs> so it works. Uh, so yeah. we, I'm going to take one more question. Sure. Uh, Soul Cloud. I'd like to know if this is a good one to two shot. A jailbreak town skipping session in which you're mostly dealing with NPCs that hunt you, but instead of normal creatures, uh, continue there are domesticated uh, creatures who are based on off of like all right so basically i i, I get what you're saying and uh basically the best monsters are humans <laughs> <laughs> i'm yeah uh, the 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 beginning of that sounds like an interesting concept like i i i've done that in a game before like the players stole something and then they were yeah. they were running from the 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 bounty hunters that were trying to find them and it, it can be really fun yeah. because if you have like a big old map and you can like plan out where they go and like have like a chase it can be really really interesting our our expanse game right um we kind of like we did the session zero it was a ton of fun and we came up with like the idea and we're all we're all like belters and i don't know mm. if you if you've watched the show or not or if you're into the books uh um, which one uh expanse expanse i i haven't but i you should definitely have... watch it is a great great show like there's so there's three factions you've got cool. the, the you know the inner the inners and the outers right and the outers are um, like the Earthers and the Mars, and I may even have this backwards. And then the Inners are, are the Belters, which basically they live in space stations, and they're basically they're 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 space hillbillies and miners, right? But oh, okay. like everyone kind of abuses them, and mm. uses them for the resources. So uh, so they have <laughs> this organ this organization called the the APO, and it's basically like a it's kind of like a political slash terrorist organization okay. that kind of fights for their rights uh not to party but to live um <laughs> <laughs> so we all decided to be those and like two of us are like apo terrorists essentially or we're trying to not be terrorists anymore yeah and, and then you know steph my wife's character is like a uh, like a debutante rich character that turned criminal for something as like for kicks and who's kind That's of kind of cool gotten ted's character her brother who's a professor into trouble tricked him into like being the driver on one of her one of her cons and so they get arrested we get arrested and the dm was like um usually i will do it jailbreak and start people in jail and i have to come up with it but you my players have all put yourselves in jail to start the game uh well <laughs> that's kind of fun yeah so it makes it easy now we don't have to worry about yeah. you know getting equipment and stuff <laughs> yeah. that's kind of interesting I, I like that you know having to be creative about what you do next is is I, i'm big on that kind of stuff i really like to make players think like what you know outside of like what they're normally used to instead of okay you are in town town go kill a dragon like get, getting something like okay now you're in jail and you have to figure out what to do it's like I, I i love that it's like super interesting and like they get to go oh shoot this is a completely different situation than what we've been in before and it can make for some fun stories yeah so i started watching the expanse because uh, green ronin did yeah. the kickstarter for for the rpg and it's based off of their age system that's cool. So I was like, oh, that's cool. And then, in, you know, they dropped the first season on Prime. And so I started watching it. So they're like four seasons deep now. It's a really great show. It's based off of novels that were based off of RPG games that the, the authors had played. And then they turned it into a novel. Then the novel was then turned into its own RPG. It had nothing to do with the original RPGs. And then it was also turned into, you know, a Prime series. All right. So cool. if, you're, if you're looking, you know, if you're looking for something to watch, uh, I just got I'll have my, to check it out. It sounds I, pretty cool. I just got my wife into it, and uh, yeah, <laughs> we were. I think we're. I think we're in like season two now because I had already watched them all. But it, it was. I don't really. I don't generally rewatch stuff, but this yeah. was definitely. It's worth rewatching. That's cool. That's good. I always like stuff like that. It's like it's kind of cool to rewatch and see yeah. it again. It's awesome. So we are up on the hour, and you know I would sit here and Whoa, talk with you. Whoa, that was okay, an hour! Oh my god, we're actually a little <laughs> bit past, but you know that kidding? was fast. I didn't even realize it in an hour. <laughs> I mean, it goes it goes by so yeah. fast. Jeez, yeah. Uh, parting words before we head on out. Oh, you know what? Are All I've got to say. Talk? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's trying to get in here on 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 the on the live chat here, but um, I, all I've got to say is.
Fireball solves everything. Fireball solves everything. Yep. With those uh, words of wisdom, until next time, stay nerdy. <laughs> those are my words of wisdom. <laughs>